All right, Colts fans. So this is going to be a new sounding thing for you, but this is deja vu for us. This is our second run at this, so hopefully I'm doing a good job this time. But we are back with the Colts film session interview uh, where I uh, bring in Colts players to talk about some of their films, some of their best plays that I saw from the year before. Uh, we had a lot of great interviews last year with uh, Naeem Hines, Kamal Kature, Ben Banigou. A lot of really fun stuff. Uh, so this is technically season two of this, and I'm bringing in uh, one of my favorite players currently on the Colts, and uh, Chris Reed, uh, who's a free agent signing. Uh, and this is going to be the third time I'm saying this, but uh, you know, I, I didn't know who Chris Reed was when the Colts first signed him. Uh, you know, I, I was at work, I I saw the name pop up, it just no clue who that was. Uh, watched some of his film, came away as, as a huge fan. So. Uh, I'm obviously a huge fan of Chris Reed. You guys all know that, and I'm happy to have him here as my uh, my first guest on the show. So welcome to uh, the film session interview, man. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, of course. And, you know, we, we were shooting this shit a little bit before the uh, recording cut out, but, you know, going to your background, uh, Minnesota State, and I, I you just told it to me, Minnesota State, uh, what was the <laughs> last one again? Mankato? Mankato, yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. So super small school, made the journey all the way up to the NFL. I mean, that's insane. I mean, was well, you're just getting a lot of NFL scouts down there looking at you and, and uh, Adam uh, Thielen? Thielen, yeah. Uh, or was it more of just like you got into an NFL camp and were, were just able to kind of roll from there? Well, there were some scouts going through. Um, I don't really remember a ton of scouts coming through, but – it was a decent amount, and then I played in it like a, a small like a all-star game kind of thing okay. uh, where there was actually a lot of scouts because it was a later one. Um, it was one of those smaller ones that a lot of people went to because uh, the big ones had been over, and there wasn't just a lot. It was just a good time for everybody to get down there. So uh, that was some good exposure as well. And, um, yeah, and then I, I got an undrafted free agent to the Jacksonville Jaguars and uh, played four years there, and then – one year with Miami and one year with the Panthers. So, yeah, journey. Yeah. Here you are out in Indy, and you know, um, you know, to, before we even get to you know coming out to Indy here, uh, another thing with college, you know, your co collegiate Hall of Famer uh, for uh, the discus throw, uh, just just outstanding achievement, you know, to be a collegiate Hall of Famer. I mean, what does it mean to you to kind of be, I guess, you know, with that honor, that kind of award that you got uh, as a college athlete? I mean, it was it was a great. It was great. It was kind of out of the blue too. I didn't really know that there was a, you know, I would have been inducted in, in all that. And that happened last year. It was actually for the shot put. Um, God, I said, <laughs> hey, you're fine. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you're gonna be. <laughs> there, there's, a, there's a there's a bunch of throws in there. So yeah, you're gonna be. You know, you, you're gonna be a Hall of Famer in all three of them: javelin, discus, <laughs> all shot of them. put, yeah. all of them. My book. Yeah. You're. <laughs> Yeah, oh man, it was a great, great honor to have. Um, uh, and uh, man, it just it just makes you feel good about the work you put in through through uh, college and 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 so on. So um, hopefully, I can get back to throws one day. Um, I have a passion. It's kind of my my secondary passion right now. Just uh, you know, I, I threw a couple years ago and like a unattached meet and all that stuff. And I keep up with it, and you know, this year being the Olympics as well, it's kind of a fun year for shot put and throws in general. So, it's a, kind of my my thing I like to pay attention to outside of football. Do you work on the other throws that I keep trying to attribute to you? <laughs> so, shot put is my best uh, event. Um, I I never really liked discus. I I threw it, but I I couldn't really do it too well. Um, mm. And then uh, I actually really liked hammer. Okay. Hammer throw was really fun. It was. It took. A, it took four years to learn properly, but I finally got it down a little bit at the end there. So, but it was. It was really fun. So, definitely. Uh, but shot put is my kind of where my heart's at. <laughs> Just yeah. throw something as far as you can. I mean, pretty simple. I feel like technique plays so much because you know it's it's kind of like with baseball, you know, where you don't have to be like the absolute strongest to be a really good pitcher. It's all that technique with pitching. You'll add like ten miles per hour to your throw. Exactly. So how big is the, you know the technique that you have to, to do throws, and how much does that relate over to you know offensive line play where the technique is just so big uh, as well? I mean, the they really go hand in hand. I mean, shot puts very technically like I mean, you have to hit certain positions consistently every time, you know, to throw well in the first place. Um, and the better you get at hitting those positions, and then you speed up as you start hitting them. It's the same as, as football. You start basic techniques. 
and you work on them getting faster and, and stronger with them and, and it carries over like that so the strength training is carry over as well you know a lot of explosive movements a lot of heavy weight um not people many not many people know but you know throwers are the strongest probably in the weight room usually so mm -hmm. besides offense alignment or defense alignment so it's uh yeah, I mean it's it's a it was a great carryover when I was in college. Awesome, awesome. Then getting to the NFL, you know, before we jump into the film here, you know, you're you're coming out to Indy where the Colts have a great offensive line, uh, two great coaches, uh, Chris Strasser, you know, a guy who's been around for forty years, I believe, mostly at the college level, but the last like five years he's been in the NFL. Uh, just how big of a role did it play, you know, this coaching staff coming out here to Indy? Um, you know, it played a good part. You know, I there's. You know, one you have the the offensive line who's played together for a, a long time. A lot of the starters have, and um, there's a lot of experience and knowledge among that group as well. And uh, so, learning from them, and then also learning from you know Coach Strausser and uh, Kevin Mawai, just you know learning from those guys who've been around for a while, and you know Kevin who played for four, 16 years in the league um, as a, as a center as well. You know, that's you know the position like I play interior, so I'm gonna learn a lot from him um as well so i mean that that played a huge part but then as an organization as the whole i mean it's 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 got a great mentality and everyone buys into the program and and it's just an awesome place to be have they talked to you yet about the like blocking style differences that they have so far you know like they are very big on the howard mud style of yeah. blocking which is you know uh Offensive line play is not passive. It's go get everybody, you know, all the time. It's it's always get them. Have you kind of seen a little bit of that on your film review of, of yeah, this? Yeah, and I've been in similar um, blocking schemes, if not, you know, technique uh, coaches that have, have had the same technique kind of as they were coaching. So, I mean, uh, Pat Flaherty was one of the one of the guys who was a big Howard Mudd guy as well. He, he learned a lot of stuff from them. And um, last year, Pat Meyer, you know, we had some carryover. There was – some some uh, go get them techniques on pad all that stuff too that we use a lot of so uh, it was uh, it's 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 a good carryover in, in in just learning learning kind of from the ground up again just but it's 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 similar stuff I've done in the past awesome awesome yeah I'm always I'm always big on finding the mud technique in guys especially the guys that the Colts bring over uh, I always look for the ass blocks you know that's a big Howard mud yeah. thing is the yeah. ass block yep. <laughs> I don't know if I found any on yours, but I always I look for like them. one or two last year. I probably yeah. not very many though. I will I will go search through all the film again. I will find the ass blocks <laughs> <laughs> wherever they are. Um, but yeah, dude, Howard Mudd. I, I think that's honestly my favorite. You know, obviously he passed away this past year, but he was definitely my favorite guy to to study and and listen to talk. I mean, the, his way of approaching offensive line play was always so interesting to me. Uh, and I, it's just a way that now that like whenever I watch offensive linemen, if I see a vertical set, I get upset now because I just <laughs> <laughs> I, I've kind of adopted the Howard Mudd style. No. Um, do do you kind of prefer that kind of play style compared to a traditional vertical type of place, or kind of where's where are you kind of like preference wise? Um, preference wise, I like to get up and get on people fast. Um, yeah. I. Uh, I'm a little smaller armed, I guess I'd say, than a lot of the guys in the NFL. So um, it's it's my advantage to get on guys quickly. Um, I don't necessarily have the reach that some of these guys do. So um, I have to I have to have that in the back of my mind when I'm playing in pass pro and whatnot, and um, try to get on guys as quickly as I can when when you know in, in the appropriate time. Sometimes you have to get set back. You know, there's certain certain situations and, and whatnot. So, but uh, no, I like to get up and get on people. Awesome. Awesome. Now we're going to get into some film here before we're just talking without even having it up. Um, and we're going to show some of those Howard Mudd things and some of uh, just, <laughs> just straight up burying some guys. So uh, the first clip, and we kind of briefly talked about it before the last stream shut down here, but uh, this was your first snap of the entire season coming right back from the COVID list. Uh, and you definitely wanted to make uh, kind of a message, you know, it's kind of a tone setting type of play. Um, and, you know, you got the naked uh, boot here. And you just are able to level the the defensive tackle with a really nice club. There uh, was the club kind of something that you developed on these type of plays, or was it like know, a coaching? I don't. I can't remember the origin. Uh, it happened. It started happening back when I was in, at Jacksonville. Okay. And uh, funnily enough, from throwing, I 
I, I, you know, on some screens, we used to do screen releases. Um, mm -hmm. You would like set them up and then you kind of club them by and, and go. <laughs> and I kind of carry that over into this. Uh, just, it's just kind of a tone setting move and not very often, but you know, when I, when I get it and I, and it, it, it works well. So I, I do like to, to throw that in occasionally. I love it. I love it. Cause there's this, there's this huge debate now with, you know, the, the rise of analytics. Uh, when it comes to football, that that body blows don't matter uh, because analytically you can't account for body blows. You know, it's something that doesn't show up on a spreadsheet. Uh, but you you being on the field, how important are these kind of plays right here when it comes to just that 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 physicality that you guys have in the trenches? Yeah, I mean, there's the physical aspect of it first. You know, yeah, first you know you're taking body blows like you said, and body blows wear you down over time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this this is the first snap of the game on the you know so, but as the game goes on, you know that play compiled with the others is going to make us our job easier in the fourth quarter is kind of the mindset, right? Mm -hmm. So like that on the on the physicality standpoint, yeah, there's that, but there's also the mental one. You know, you know when you when you put someone in the ground and you do something and you you know you physically dominate someone, sometimes it gets in their head and it can affect their play throughout the game as well. So. Um, and it works both ways. So, but it just, this is a tone set and move and, um, you just throw it in there when you can. Yeah. I know I would not want to go up against you again if you did that to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I would probably still be on the ground to this day. Uh, but yeah, I, that's something I would not want to face you know, the entire game right there. Uh, I just love it though. The tone setting move. That's just a big thing with, with this offensive line, you know, you're coming to a line with, with Quentin Nelson who, you know, he actually gets highlight reels for what he does yeah. to guys. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you're hoping that you can get those highlight reels as well. But just that that's the kind of mindset of the offensive line you're coming to. And you and you definitely know that, you know, coming out here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this next clip here, we're going to get, yeah, get hands inside, which I love, and then just toss them aside. Um, but I, I, I always love just looking at the technique of, of offensive line play and, and, you know, it's something I'm always trying to get better at. I never played, obviously, near the level that you did. So it's hard for me to kind of speak from any kind of experience. But uh, the first strike is something I always notice with you is you, you if you don't get the first strike, you'll get inside because you got those, you know, like you said, the shorter arms, it's hard for you to get that first strike. Yeah. But when you do, you, you combat it really well with great positioning. So here you have your hands right inside on that guy there. Just how big is it to make sure, especially, again, with your arm length that you said, that you're getting your hands in the right position? Uh, it's a big thing, you know, for anyone really. So, I mean, the thing with this is it's a good initial strike. You know what I, you know, once you get your hands inside, you really don't want to move them. So that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's part of it. And then, you know, if you miss, obviously you want to reposition your hands, but getting inside, you know, the inside man wins basically, mm -hmm. you know, so that's, that's always what you strive for is that good initial punch. And you always want to have a really strong inside hand. Um, because that helps in multiple ways, especially if he comes and tries to cross the face. You can, if you throw a good inside hand, half the time it saves you if your feet are out of position. So, um, yeah, it was a good rep. And he actually managed to get his hand back inside and started pressing me back a little bit. So that's when I came and threw him back across the quarterback's face so I wouldn't get a hit. I love it. I love it. So is this kind of your, again, your throwing uh, background here, just your ability? <laughs> uh, the, the torque there is just so good. It's, it's, you know, you reestablish, you plant that left foot, and then you're able just to move this. It, I mean, we're not talking about just moving anyone. This is, what, a 310, 320-pound guy. Okay. Uh, just is, moves is that out if that's Phillips, he's like, I think it was like 330. 330, okay, my yeah. fault, even bigger. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, is that kind of your throwing background? I mean, did you do some wrestling too? Because that just seems like one of those type of things there where that, that ability to torque and use that, that strength uh, to move a guy. I mean, that has to be something that you've definitely worked on, right? Oh yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I, I think it does come from the throwing background and just, you know, I just kind of always have that muscle memory there. So it kind of helps a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Love it. And then these next two clips are probably two of my favorite just because they are about using the defender's leverage against them. Uh, you know, there's techniques that we that we look at when we study offensive line play, like the snatch and trap type of technique, uh, which is going to be the next clip. Or this one here, when you're getting a bull or you're getting a long arm and you're able to use their momentum against them and pull them to the ground. Uh, this is just a great example of it where you get him with it's just his arm is holding him up. He's completely off balance and you're able just to pull him down for the <laughs> for the block there. Uh, 
is that something that you came into the league with the knowledge of like, you know, using their leverage against them when they're leaning on me? Or is that something with, you know, all these offensive line coaches you've had, you've kind of been, been able to develop that? You know, it's kind of a, it's both, you know, I, I did use it a couple times. I really didn't use it too much in college. Mm-hmm. Um, but as I got into the league, you know, these guys are, you know, best of the best. So you have to find a, a toolbox almost. And just, so I learned, you know, from a, um, I think it was my, you know, first or second year, um, the trap arm was going to be very beneficial to me because I have smaller arms. So if someone does get my chest and they're pressing me back, I can trap and it's actually takes them out of the play entirely. So, uh, it is a good, it is a good move. I like to use it, uh, pretty often when that when the, when you have players like this yeah and then he gets right up in your face there too right afterwards he's definitely not happy about it. <laughs> how much is the like the the trash talking game for offensive line versus defensive line in the NFL? yeah it's definitely there you have you I, i'm i'm a pretty quiet guy myself i i'd like to just do the work <laughs> and uh but uh, you know i won't take anything right so like you know that's kind of one of those I don't really say anything, but I like to to put it on tape. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. And this one's even better example of it. And uh, this one's in pass protection, so it's even bigger. Uh, But you get him off off balance here. He's leaning, uh, even though he's using both of his arms here. uh, And then you just come down with a really good long or just really good uh, left arm there and put him in the ground. Um, And I like what you said about, you know, because you're a shorter arm guy, that's a big thing that you learn. I think uh, one of the shorter arm tackles in the league is uh, Taron Armstead for the Saints. Yeah. And this is like his go-to move. Uh, it's it's just something that you have to be able to combat, especially for you though against defensive tackles. Because if if you let these you know 310, 320, 330 pound guys lean on you, that's never good. You know, it's yeah. never good for them to get on you. Uh, so I just love watching this here. Um, was this something that you kind of noticed, like on film, that he was going to do? I can't remember what part of the game this was in. So, so yeah, was, you, you notice guys. You know, some guys really love to go the long arm, and that's kind of one of their signature moves or power. If they like power, then they kind of get to long arms at times. Mm-hmm. Uh, others, it's a reactionary. Um, if you feel that in your chest and you feel it starting to push you back, you can always chop it, and it's just something you work on in practice. And even outside of practice, you just have someone kind of push your arm into you. Like we used to do it with some of my teammates and some of the guys that we're out with, we we would close our eyes and actually have someone stab you, and you have to react to where it was. So if it's okay. up in the top of your shoulder, you snap it up. If it's in the middle of your chest, you snap it down. So you can get the feel. So when it's happening in seconds and milliseconds, then you can react faster to what you're getting. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I just love that. That's one of my favorite clips right there. Uh, I just love being able to use because everything is so. You know, it's tough when being an offensive lineman because, you, you know, you can't hold. You're restricted by a lot of things. Even if it looks like, you know, play like this, I'm shocked they wouldn't call you for a holding because it looks like one. <laughs> uh, so, you know, you have to restrict these great athletes from getting by you. So just little things like that. I always love being able to point them out. Uh, this next one here is actually you uh, putting Grady Jarrett on the ground, which one of the best defensive tackles in football. Uh and you guys had one hell of a matchup in, in two, you know, two games where you guys had pretty back and forth matchups where you won some reps, he won some reps. Yeah. What, what was that one? What was that kind of matchup like for you going against someone with the, that's the caliber of Grady Jarrett? You know, it was, a, it was a great challenge. And I learned a lot. You know, like that's the thing is, you know, anytime you lose something, you go back and you learn from it. And uh, he definitely got me a couple of times. Um, yeah. He's got a really good inside move and he used it well. And uh you know, the thing I like to take, you know, from that is I don't like to be beat by the same move twice um, in the same game, especially. So, you know, I, I go to the sideline, you know, make sure I get in my head like, OK, what do I need to do different? You know, and, and try to fix it on the fly. And um, that's one of the things I like to, to do in games as well. So uh, but it is a great matchup and he's a he's a great player and it was a good learning experience. And I, I gained a lot of football knowledge from doing that. Yeah. Did it feel good to get him on this type of play right here? It did. <laughs> anytime, anytime you're on top of someone on the ground, it's, it's good. Is it kind of, do you ever get those, like, I don't want to say like in all moments, but like Grady Jarrett is a guy who very well could be in the Hall of Fame one day. Like he's, he's been that good throughout his career. Do you ever get like that moment in your head throughout a game? I mean, I like, I know you're a competitor, but you know, you put him on the ground, you're like, holy shit, I just pancake Grady Jarrett. You know, like, do you ever have those kind of moments? Not, not ever during a game. Um, okay. And, you know, like I, it's not something I like to get in my head about at all. 
you know, when you're in, when, like when I'm in the game, I'm in the game, you know, afterwards mm-hmm. or something like that. Maybe it's like kind of cool to take a moment and think about it. But um, yeah, it's, it's hard to, I, I, did, I haven't, I've, I've rarely gotten starstruck in the NFL. So um, because, you know, these guys, you know, it's, it's fun to see in person, a lot of the guys, but it's never been a, I never really had a starstruck moment like that. No. Yeah. And you know, you're, you're in the NFL too. So it's not like they're on this different plane of existence from you. You guys are both NFL guys and you're going to be having to block these guys. So yeah, completely. I was just curious. Cause I know for me, I'd be like, Holy shit. Grady Jarrett's on his back. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> uh, but here we got to play. And again, I, I love your athleticism along with, you know, we've looked at your strength and your ability to torque and move guys. Uh, but this, this kind of athleticism is, is what makes or breaks in today's NFL. You know, the, the level of athlete where, you know, you got this guy shading to your outside here and the run play is coming right off, right in this gap right here. I think it's the, the B gap right here. And you have to shield him out of that gap. Uh, so you do a great job of just getting your hips out there and then turning your body. Um, again, was that something that, you know, you were really good at coming out of college or something that, you know, with a lot of work and technique, you were able to, get to the point where you could control a block and twist your hips and, and kind of get to the level where you are with it. Yeah. I'd say, uh, coming out, I was pretty raw, but you know, I feel like the reason I was able to stay is because I was coachable, but I also had athleticism. So I think I kind of had it coming into the NFL, but it's been refined ever since. So, um, and I, and I just keep trying to work on that too, you know, cause you know, the, the, the more, the better you can move, the better, the longer you're going to last. So that's just mm-hmm. kind of, yeah. So where are you trying to get your hands like in a play like this? You know, like when, when you have to get to that out, like you have to get to like basically his outside shoulder. Yeah. So this uh, is actually on the fly call. We just had a huge play before this. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so we got up to the ball quickly, called the play and it's outside zone to the left, just the weak outside zone. So basically everyone's going to the left and my, my aiming point is his outside number. Mm-hmm. So I want to get my hat outside his outside number. And I want to get my hands ideally inside the left hand hooks a little bit. And I kind of feel that if I, I kind of feel him coming off the ball like that. And I was able to get around him quickly enough to where I could pivot back and open up this lane where Curtis could cut back. So um, it was kind of reactionary. It wasn't ideal with my hand placement, especially my left hand, but um, it, it got the job done. And at the end of the day, that's kind of, <laughs> kind of what you want. You know what I mean? Yeah. So did you have one of those offensive line coaches? Because I always hear stories about them that would have given you like a negative on that play just for your hand placement or, you know, you got the job done. You're good. Um, It depends. You know, like I think I've had different coaches and, and a lot of them at the end of the day, if you got the job done with you now, if it's not the right technique or something like that, then, yeah, you'll get a minus. But mm-hmm. um, that wasn't I mean, the only thing I could have seen on that was the left hand. And then my second set didn't really get into him as much. But um it was kind of on the fly play and you know that was that package where they could have done some twists and stuff like that as well so yeah um but yeah so i mean i i some some coaches are nitpickier more than others <laughs> yeah i always hear about offensive line coaches man they're nitpicky on everything yeah, if uh, you're not nitpicky though you're not gonna get better no for sure i mean that's uh, exactly yeah. that's how you gotta be i mean i've been down to the senior bowl a couple times and i'm telling you the best coaches to just go by and listen are the offensive line coaches they're absolutely insane but they have to be insane so that's, that's their whole job uh this play i just love right here is getting to the second level uh and and just shielding off the block there and again just athleticism is what i like to highlight with a lot of these plays uh do you think i guess it's kind of what their their playbook was in carolina was kind of these you know a lot of zone runs and stuff like that but you think your ability as an athlete really helped kind of open this offense up in in the run game um, I like to think so. I think it's, I think overall it's, you know, as a, anytime you get into like an offense, like really it's the offensive line kind of leads the way, mm-hmm. especially in the run game, but it's also, it's every other player. I mean, if you got wide receivers, who can block, you got Ian Thomas out, you're blocking at the, like your second, like the corner, I think, or safety. Mm-hmm. Um, you, once you, if you get everyone blocking the run game, you can be unstoppable. I mean, that's really – a lot of the times the big, big, big blocks that break plays are wide receivers and, and tight ends out here. So, you know, offense line kind of sets the groundwork. But I like to think my my abilities definitely helps. And I think, you know, here there's a good little head fake, you know. We got a trap coming on with John Miller over right there. 
just clocks them. So <laughs> it was a good, yeah. good setup. And then 74, I think that's, is that Daly or is that Ocon? I don't no, that's uh, Gre uh, uh, Greg. Oh, Greg Little. Greg Little. Little. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he gets a great block there too. Ian Thomas, great block. Yeah, I mean, that's just beautifully blocked. Uh, you guys had a lot of really fun run concepts last year. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, having kind of a guy who just came from the college level probably helps, you know, having that new mind, uh, you know, from Joe Brady uh, coming yeah. up. And, uh, yeah, you guys had a lot of really, really fun run concepts. I really enjoyed watching them. <laughs> uh, this one's just, again, it's – it's. Um, I, I love the grip strength here. Uh, even though your hands are a bit outside here, he gets his hands inside here. Just the ability to, hold, to latch on and <laughs> – I mean – that has to be frustrating for a defensive tackle. <laughs> it, I'm sure it can be. Yeah, I <laughs> like this. You know, this technique is actually a technique that was, you know, we we use occasionally. Was if you're going at somebody, you can actually sometimes, you know, if they're swiping and stuff, you can just whoop, just get the shoulder pads. And as soon as you get the shoulder pads, what you want to do is you want to tuck your elbows in because they won't be able to get off. So that's kind of the the whole concept of that. Oh, dude, that's not that. This seems so damn annoying. If <laughs> on your shoulder pads is up, and then you have to be disrespectful at the end. I mean, just, uh, you, you know what I don't like is I, I got it, I got it, I got it, and at the very end there, he started moving his feet real well, and I just kind of let him back up and then just use his momentum again <laughs> from there. I love it. I love it. So was that a technique that you guys were going over like last year, or something that you learned before last year? Uh, I was something last year that was introduced you know it's it's a it's a situational thing you know when you got a guy you've been jumping them all time or flat setting them a bunch and um it's a good change up to kind of flip your hands on the outside and you, you do it with you know uh maybe not a Grady jared or something like that but you know it can work at times with him as well so but it's just uh it's a situational and i think that was uh i was i was selling selling a run a little bit so mm -hmm. i was getting a little more into his face and i wanted to latch on and I like to think I'm pretty strong, so. <laughs> so I, I like mean, honestly, that. I'm shocked you didn't just close the shoulder pads up there on him. You just picked them up, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So this next one here, I, I think this is the one that really shows off your athleticism. Uh, this is a shade technique to the opposite side, and you have to cut him off. Uh, do you know kind of going into this place, I think it's an outside zone to the Yeah, right. it's outside zone. Yeah, it's an outside zone, and we got a guy coming from the but, – so I think Matt – Paradis actually called it great here. He, the we called like an AB or you know whatever the term. It's basically I'm coming with him, and he thinks the nose is returning. Mm -hmm. So the nose is going to take a small step to the opposite side, and then he's going to start chasing down the ball on the other side. So I got to get my butt over there because the back we're going to is actually over the nose on the opposite side. Mm -hmm. so that's that's why, uh, so I, that's why I go so extremely flat right here is because my backer's over there, and we think it's going to be a nose return there. Yeah, that's just great. Uh, and you know, you have to haul ass to get to that spot. Oh, yeah, there. that's one of them. That's a haul ass play for sure. Yeah, yeah, and it's just uh, yeah, that is a great read too. That he is returning because if he's if he's crashing up this gap right here, you have no chance at that. It's gonna be hard. Well, Matt would probably have cut him off pretty yeah. good. And then it's then it's like just a chase game. You know, I'm I'm chasing the backer, and ba basically everything would have been washed, and it would be actually being cut by behind me probably mm -hmm. on the other side. So it was a great call by Matt. Yeah, how much does that kind of change on the, you know, as an offensive lineman, everything happens so quick. You have to be able to adjust on the fly and go from, you know, like 91's my first guy, but if he get, if he goes here and gets picked up here, I have to switch to 53. Like how much does that mind game have to be for you as an offensive lineman? You, know, you don't really think about it too much during a game because what's great is that all these plays have built-in rules, mm -hmm. and if you follow the rules, they pick up things. The zone tracks. Uh, yeah, ex almost exactly. Yeah, there's certain yeah. techniques in certain situations, but a lot of the time, you, when you're game planning people, like we knew that that was a blitz that they had, or like a pressure that they had, that nose return, and then they're flying over the top. So, you know, it's it's uh, it's something. And then during the game, you can almost get these tells from the defense alignment, like oh, they're opposite hands down. That means they're not, you know, they're going a certain way, or you know, something like that. So. You do pick up on things a lot, but really, we you you hammer in those rules in camp and like during this off season stuff is when you learn those rules and try to get them like a natural reaction, so you don't have to really think about it during the game. Awesome, awesome. Then we're gonna go to some more fun ones here. Uh, I think this is a linebacker blitzing on you, uh, and you just are having none yeah, of it. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, do you, I, I guess it's kind of like a pride thing for an offensive lineman, right? Like if you're going to get a linebacker or a safety on you, you have to be able to finish. Yeah. The, the I think, guy. I think, yeah, linebackers and, you know, some are great. But, but the number 56 for the Saints, he does a really good job. He has some really good moves out of that package. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I, anytime I get a small guy, I like to finish as best as I can. So, yeah. Love it. Love it. I think that was Alex Anzalone there. Um, oh, yeah. The ground. Just love it. Um, here we got you pulling and just finishing 56 right there. So linebacker yet again. Um, <laughs> yeah, and DeMario Davis is great. He's a great linebacker, um, but just paving the way here in the run game. I uh, obviously just love seeing it there. What's kind of, you know, are, when you're pulling, are you trying to go more for, you know, just the big kick out block? Or are you trying to go more for hitting and driving a guy? Like what's kind of the technique on, on pulls to the outside like this? So this kind of pull, um, I believe it's a power pull. So it's like a, mm-hmm. it's like a, I'm coming up in the hole for a backer who's off the ball, right? So ideally I want to be inside out because the ball is supposed to go on the inside here. So it's supposed to go literally where it goes right there. Yeah. So that's like, you know, you want to be inside out on those blocks. Ideally you want that big blow up block, but you want to get them out of there. You don't want yeah. them to land on the same place because you want to open that hole. So if you hit them and run them, it's, it's good. You just want to be inside out really. And then there's other blocks. Like I think you got one coming up here too. That's, a trap block, which is different, you know, it's like a setter play. So it's you, you're blocking a guy on the line of scrimmage, and and that has a different approach where you want to you want to create that space, but those collisions are collisions. Yeah, so <laughs> absolutely. And then we have more collisions coming up here. Here you find oh, yeah. work on uh on Kenny Clark, uh, who again is just another excellent excellent defense tackle, one of the best in football. Uh, how how big is it to find work though in the passing game? You know, like it goes back to those body blows that we talked about earlier. Uh, but just making sure that you're able to keep the pocket clean while also setting a tone as a pass block. You know, I I learned well, it was actually from uh, Guglielmo. Uh, oh yeah, Coach Googe, yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Um, he was big. He was a big. He, I would play for him at Miami, and he was a big clean the pocket guy. So I kind of I try to I try to as much as I can. Anytime I'm available, I look for work. And uh, you know, Doug Marone also is a big guy on. Um, finishing and, and, and finding someone to hit because it's also one of those, you go back to the body blows, you know, it's a body blow thing, you know, that hit might not affect him on the next play, but down the road, it's going to affect him at some point. So, you know, you, you, if you try to find work and you get someone available, like go help somebody, go hit somebody, if you can knock them down all the better. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And this, this Kenny Clark matchup was great. Um, you know, for going against a guy who, is one of the best in the league again. I think you did a great job in this one. How was how this matchup for you, and how do you, how would you kind of compare it to the Grady Jarrett one? Uh, so they're very similar players. Grady Jarrett's a little more, you know, he got a lot more swipes and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Clark likes to play from this two eye a lot. You know, he he does play three technique quite a bit, but you know, he likes to play this and he likes to get a, get you going side to side a little bit and then make his move. He's also a very good power rusher, so. Um, you know, in the first couple of clips of uh, the game, actually, I think he he did bowl me back once, which is funny because he actually helped me pick up a, a blitz that was coming off the head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, he um, yeah. He got me turned a little bit. Luckily, I was able to hook on and like not let him, you know, affect the play too much. So, but he's a, he's a good player as well. I mean, you know, anytime you go against these guys, it tests what you've learned up to this point, and uh, it just you just grow as a player, you know, by playing you know the best guys in the league. Yeah, and then two things I want to point out with this one because I just love this clip so much. The first one is I love the fake jab that you do here with your right arm. It's really quick right there. It's a quick one. Uh, I see that a lot in your game. You either will do like the fake jab or you do a quick jab right there and kind of reset. Does yeah. that kind of just go into the mind game of being an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman? Yeah, I mean, so so for me, like this move, I kind of used it a lot more last year than I had previous years. Yeah, I saw it a lot last year. One, one, it was kind of it was kind of the way we. Were, it wasn't something that I was coached necessarily. It was something. It was more of a preference. You know, they left it up to the players a little bit. Um, I like it because it. You know, I sometimes have issues with swiping. Okay. Um, just because the timing of my punches is sometimes like I can get my hands swiped down a little bit. And last year we were a lot of individual punches. So what I like to do is get out there and flash something, and then I probably overused it a little too bit because then people weren't falling for it, right? Because <laughs> that's the thing is you want you want the, the flash or, or the the mimic of that tries to it gets them to do their first move if they're going to do a swipe or something, right? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Um, so if they do that first move, then the second hand comes really fast and it can get on them. And then boom, they're done. They're stopped and they're on to their transition run. So I, I really like doing this, especially when you got guys who like to swipe, uh, especially, you know, two eye position here is one of the more difficult blocks because if he goes back outside, you got to get back out flat and try to, you know, prevent him from, from closing the circle. So I like to throw that hand out there and try to get him to take the bait. You know, sometimes they don't take the bait and then you just got to transition back. And he actually got me with the arm over on this one. Mm -hmm. So I kind of pulled back my shoulder. I just tried to run my feet and get him out of the, get him out of the pocket. Yep, and that, that was going to be my second thing here is I love that even though he does kind of get you here, you notice that he opens up his, his chest, essentially. Yeah. And you're able to drive him out of the pocket there. Uh, it, and it kind of goes back to that Howard Mudd principle of you know just doing whatever to get the job done. Uh, so even if, even if you are getting beat, just driving him out, even with your shoulder there, uh, was able to open up enough for the ball to get out. So I, I just love watching those type of plays there. Uh, I just think that was just great, great technique all around. And then this one's just you knocking the guy off balance. <laughs> exactly. Empty protection. Empty protection. Uh, yeah. Oh, the one thing I wanted to point out with this one, though, is the eyes here. When you kind of got this simmed pressure here, you yeah. know, you're obviously playing inside out, right? You have the in most inside guy there because the, the quarterback, if they do bring – the all six guys here is responsible for the outermost guy. Yeah. Uh, but I, I like how quick you are here with your eyes to go from 54 to 90 when you see that that blitz is is not coming. Uh, and again, that kind of goes to the mental aspect of playing offensive line that people don't realize. So I, I just want to highlight that here. I love how quick you're able to get – how tough are those sim blitzes kind of? Like I know you obviously have your rules and responsibilities, but – Yeah, these ones are tough. This one – these kind of these kind of ones require a lot of like uh, trust on your tackle too because – you have to work in tandem when you have that kind of, uh, you know, everyone has different language for it, but it's like a squeeze bounce you know, we mm -hmm. called last year. So, you know, you're, you're set, trying to set, you're trying to set it like he's coming. Mm -hmm. um, you ideally don't want to move your foot too far inside because you can't get back out and you have to trust that your tackles doing the same thing because your eyes should mimic each other. Like, so Russell does a great job because he actually, he's played a long time and he knows that guy's not coming. So he's out a little quicker and I was able to snap him out, but, they are they are tough, um, but using the right technique, it's easy to pick up. Ideally, you don't want to be in that situation, but Vikings are quite notorious for their double A package. Yeah, Colts actually do a lot of that too. They bring Le Leonard and uh, Okariki up there in that double A, or they bring a safety into the double A. Um, it, it, I actually really enjoy it as a guy who likes defense, but I can see how much a pain in the ass it, it would be for for an offensive lineman. Uh, this one here is more about hand placement here and, and just re redoing your hands. You know, you get those hands out wide here on the outside of his shoulder pads, and he's able to get that inside leverage on yeah. you. Uh, but you do a great job with readjusting your hands and hooking back in uh, and also getting his hands off you. Um, so I, I just love seeing how you're able to work this one right here. Um, and, and, again, how, how big is it to, like, even when you do miss, you can't panic. You have to get those hands back into your spot, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's something I, you know, last year I worked on quite a bit is refit my hands, and because um, sometimes I rely too much on my strength, so I'll grab a guy and try to hold him, you know, and so and that that, that just doesn't work, you know. Positioning is everything, especially with your hands. So repositioning those as soon as you feel like you, it's just a, a, a reaction thing. If you, as soon as you feel like you don't have leverage or can press, you got to refit those hands and get them inside, and. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's a uh, like I said, inside inside man wins. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think this one we have you just get to the second level again. I, I do love the the footwork here to slide out to the second level instead of just kind of run out there and yeah. lose your lose your balance there. Was that now that that's something that I think would be so, tough going to the NFL with, you know? <laughs> yeah, so this actually was uh, I was supposed to chip the nose, but he decided to go on the other side, so I oh, just okay. continued up <laughs> to the. To the secondary that are um because the guy over here he's a four eye on the tackle so he's there's i can't i'm not gonna be able to help him so i was gonna go yeah. help the guy uh, the center and he just kind of went over there and whoop there i'm up up, up on the secondary <laughs> love it i love i just love the sliding up there too and yeah, yeah. again it, it just goes again to the people people just don't does it kind of frustrate you that how little the common fan understands the mental aspect of offensive line play um yeah, I mean it's kind of. It's, it's, not like, like, it's, 
it's it, a lot of people don't understand the intricacies of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like oh, they should be blocking everybody and all this stuff. But you, a lot of people don't know what happens on plays, and you know, it just it is. It's one of those things that you know, unless you've played it and you and you've continued to play it and learn about it, it's something you might not know. I mean, it's just it's just one of those things. But yeah, mentally, it's a there's a there's a mental game in football that goes on as well. You know, there's a mental battle. There's you know all that stuff. So it's it's uh, yeah, I'd say it's you know it's it's hard for a normal person to understand, but it's uh, it's fun to learn. It is, dude. It is. I mean, honestly, I don't know what's more fun than sitting back and watching Howard Mudd coaching clinic I, I, <laughs> or reading his book. His book's really yeah. good. The View from the Offensive Line, a great book. Anyone watching, I highly recommend reading it. I've read it multiple times now. It's it's just a blast. Um, but getting back to the film here again, this is just you using the leverage against the guy, uh, getting that outside arm and just <laughs> putting him on the ground. Uh, it's honestly the most fun part about offensive line play is putting guy on the ground here. I think this yeah. is another pull to the outside and just clear out block, drive him into the ground. Um, they definitely, they used you a lot on these, on these pull plays and, and to get out in front. Uh, was that just the positioning, you know, guards, you guys would do that a lot with guards, or was that kind of like, okay, this is what Chris does, this is what he can do to his strength, and we can use that in our run game? You no, know, we did it a lot with uh, both guards. You know, we pull like guards is kind of like when you have guard, like we, they like to have the big, you know, big Mueller type guards at, at the Panthers. So that's what we, we used us a lot. They used us a lot like that. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Again, very fun offense to watch. I mean, Colts do a lot of the traps and whams and such too, uh, but this was mm -hmm. this was very enjoyable to watch this uh, this offensive line group here. <laughs> uh, this one is, is a inside trap here on a I think this is a RPO. Um, yeah, it's an RPO. Yeah, I think yeah. It's a RPO. Uh, and this one I wanted to highlight because you're just punishing that jumper. Uh, you know, you yeah. can't let guys jump. That's that's a big thing you yeah, guys are talking about. Right? Yeah, two ways to do it: you pull them down or push them down. Yep. <laughs> as long as they get on the ground, yep. they jump. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I, I just love watching when guys can can punish jumpers like that. That's that's what you guys got to do. And trip over them. <laughs> yeah, or trip over them. Yeah. <laughs> do the Quentin Nelson thing where you trip over them, but then you like bring your body up over top of them so it looks like <laughs> you're on purpose. <laughs> oh yeah, just yeah. <laughs> we have the 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 viral videos of him like teabagging dudes essentially. Yeah, well. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> and those, are nasty, is, those are the nasty blocks that you love to see. Oh, dude, they are. They are. I, you know, every block's nasty uh, that you love to see with him. Uh, but this one again, just using your your raw power uh, to kick a guy outside. Uh, honestly, just just a really. I mean, this is twenty clips, guys, and this is me narrowing it down. Uh, I will say it, it's a very enjoyable experience going through uh, your clips last year. And and again, you know, it's obviously not saying that you were kind of a steal for the Colts, but personally, I think you were quite a steal for the Colts this offseason with what you signed for. And and uh, I, I'm excited to see you here in Indy this next year, man. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm excited to be in Indy as well. I mean, I, I really am. So I can't wait to get started. Yeah, absolutely. So I do have a couple fan questions. Uh, I, I wanted to just include. I, I should have told you before we jumped on, but uh, I want to. I, I want to do a thing where I incorporate these guys in, and they. I say I'll, I'll pick your two or three best questions and send them to the guys here. So uh, first one we got from Ivan Bird, and I'm going to run across the bottom here. But what are some of your favorite run blocking plays? Um, I'm a big fan of power um, downhill run. Um, it, Power or duo, it's called, you know, two double teams. Yep. Just downhill runs. Those are some of my favorite. I like to pull. Um, another one would be, you know, teams different call, call it different things. We called it ID last year. There's, you know, kind of a down, down, and around type of thing. So um, it's where you're cutting the defense and rolling out on the uh, corner of the safety or something like that or, you know, whatever's out there. So it's it, those are fun ones for me. Duo is a big thing that we'll you'll see this next year with Indy <laughs> when you get on the field. Lots of duo, lots of duo, um, a lot of different ways too, like tight ends with yeah. tackles and guards with center, guard with tackle. Like it's it's so much. I, I love how versatile they are with their duo type runs here at Indy. Um, next one we got here from Kyle Carnes. Uh, what advice would you give to the current Colts UDFA since you yourself were one? Uh, what do you think helped you make it in the league as an undrafted rookie? I think, you know, one of the things that 
stuck with me since my rookie year it was actually Doug Marone was my first offensive line coach in the NFL. And he said something to me. He, he said something. It was a group, but I, I kind of took it to heart. And it's kind of how I've been playing since is um, he would have rather coach a guy that plays it's really hard and, and very physical, comes off the ball and makes mistakes than a guy who doesn't make mistakes but doesn't really come off the ball or do anything. So that's something I've always, you know, kind of incorporated. So that's something like just just play 100% every single snap, um, come off the ball and do all that stuff. The other thing I say is you just learn. Learn, ask guys around you, ask players. You know, everyone in the NFL and any, any team I've been a part of is willing to help. You know, sometimes people are afraid to ask, but, you know, ask, ask for help, learn, learn the offense. Like that's the biggest thing. Uh, you, once you learn the offense and you, you can ask, you know, players, coaches, all that stuff. Once you learn the offense, it makes it easier. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And the last one here is actually, I think one of my favorite ones from at GD Thompson 99. Uh, what is one physical trait that you wish you had, but don't possess? And how do you compensate for that, uh, like for that deficiency with technique or plan or anything like that. Yeah. So, I mean, I kind of, we kind of mentioned it a little earlier. I have shorter arms. Mm -hmm. um, personally, I, I wish nothing was different. I, I, I like the way, you know, I just, I like the way I play, I like the way I am. And, mm -hmm. but because I have that, I need to use a variety of tools uh, in my toolkit, as we call it. So, you know, you have the chops, swipes, you have alternate punching, you have, um, like you know, heavy inside hand jump sets. You have different sets. You have jump sets, flat sets, vertical sets. There, there's a, a variety of techniques that you can incorporate um, to make up for those differences. Yeah, was that something that took a bit too for you to kind of get to? Because I think you were. Yeah, it's something you definitely build over time. And like I, you know, I'm I'm going on to year seven in the league, and I literally am still learning stuff. Yeah, there, there's so many ways, and and you know, you have one technique, and it's taught one way. Then you have five other guys who think of it something different, and you never really know until you until you talk to them or you know get coached a different way that you know something might not hit your brain properly, right? Like like I can I can say oh a flat set is this, and then someone else can say a flat set is this to them, and mm -hmm. the other person might hit your brain might hit your brain a little better and say oh that makes sense now. So you know you hear the same techniques, but they're coached different ways. So over the course of the years, you just build stuff that works for you. And if stuff doesn't work for you, then you just, you know, you have it, but you don't need it. You just put it aside. Yeah. And then you have so many different offensive line coaches and stuff that, who emphasize different things. Yeah. Uh, so I, yeah, I, I, I think that's just great to have so many different things in that toolbox. You know, that's what we always say for, for defensive linemen, but also for offensive linemen. Uh, you always have to have so many things in your toolbox, but Man, I, I appreciate you taking the time. I know I, I kept you kind of long here, especially with the technical stuff beforehand. But right. honestly, I, I could have put like 30 more clips in there if you really wanted to <laughs> get into it. I'm yeah, sure. Uh, I like to hear that. That's good. <laughs> well, well, we'll get to the ne next one. We'll have all 30 more clips. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, hopefully after this next year with the Colts, you get on the field a bit uh, this year and we can have some Colts clips to talk about. But, man, I really do appreciate you taking the time. Uh, good luck with this upcoming year. And, and like I said, you know, you have a great Chris Reed fan right here. Uh, and I'm excited to see a lot of these techniques that we talked about uh, on the field this next year. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks, Zach. Yeah, of course.